Hello, and thank you for joining me for this demonstration, which will provide an overview of Sanford Guide for Web. Sanford Guide for Web is available at web.sanfordguide.com. The majority of content is organized into three main categories, syndromes, pathogens, and anti-infectives. The platform also contains information regarding prevention of infectious diseases, drug information, including drug dosing, drug interactions, pregnancy, and lactation information. We also have calculators and a spectra of activity tool. Beginning with the home page, you will see a menu bar at the top of the screen, followed by quick links to our most popular content. Just below this, you will find an ID update section. This allows you to subscribe to updates relevant to the field of infectious diseases. You can also view previous month updates by clicking view all updates. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see a list of pages that have recently been viewed by yourself, followed by recently modified pages. These are the pages that have been recently revised by our editorial board. I highly recommend using the search feature located here at the top right of the screen to quickly find answers to your clinical questions. Click anywhere in the search box to open the search engine. You can narrow your search by limiting results to Sanford guide pages or by including all of the content available on our platform, including U.S. vaccine guidelines, CDC resources, and regional guidelines from state health departments. For example, I will search pyelonephritis. As you can see, the search can be narrowed by clicking syndromes, pathogens, anti-infectives, or other to identify information relevant to those core content areas. You can also see when the pages have been recently modified by the last modification date here on the right. And finally, icons will tell you what type of content you are looking for. So this is a syndrome page. These are state guidelines from the state of Alaska. These are pathogen pages down here. All of our syndrome, pathogen, and anti-infective information is organized in a similar fashion to facilitate ease of use. You will see clinical setting, etiologies, primary regimens, alternative regimens, antimicrobial stewardship considerations, and comments. You can navigate the page just like I did by scrolling, or you can use the table of contents located on the right-hand side to quickly jump to the section that you're looking for. All of our content is both internally and externally linked. So clicking on a drug name, for example here, ciprofloxacin, will take me to our drug page for ciprofloxacin. As I scroll down, I find a hyperlink to an external reference. Clicking on that is going to open the PubMed extract for that particular reference, and your ability to read the full text of this journal will be dependent upon your facility's access to that journal. While I definitely recommend using the search feature, like I just did to quickly find what you're looking for, I do want to show you what can be found inside of our menus and quick links to demonstrate the breadth of content available. First, clicking on the syndromes menu opens the available syndromes organized by body site. For example, if I was looking for information on endocarditis, I would further click on the cardiovascular site and then the endocarditis syndrome to find all of the options available for managing endocarditis. Moving along to our pathogens menu, you can see that we have pathogen information for bacteria, fungal, HIV, AIDS, mycobacterial, parasitic, and viral infections. If I click on the bacterial links and further expand, I can find information about all of the bacterial organisms that begin with the first letters A through B. Go ahead and click on our Acinetobacter baumani page so you can see what a pathogen page looks like. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to primary regimen so you can see an example of how pathogen pages have information about empiric therapy based on resistant types that you might see at your local facility. Moving along our menu bar here, our next stop is anti-infectives. You will see that we have information that corresponds to our pathogen information. So we have antibacterial agents, antifungal agents, antimicrobacterial agents, antiparasitic agents, antiretroviral agents, and antiviral agents. You can further click on those menus to explore the agents available organized by drug class. The prevention menu contains a lot of information related to the prevention of infections. We have information about post-exposure prophylaxis for HIV and hepatitis, Lyme disease, and sexual exposures. You can also see that we have a wealth of other information for other types of prevention. I do want to point out two commonly accessed sites. Our surgical infections prevention, you can see recommendations for preventing surgical site infections based on the type of surgery. I'll go ahead and click on the colorectal surgery page so you can see what one of those pages looks like. Again, you'll see clinical setting, etiologies, primary regimens, alternative regimens, and comments. So if we navigate down here to our primary regimens, you can see those recommendations. The other item that's located in the prevention menu that I want to point out is our U.S. vaccines content. 
We have vaccine information for both adult and pediatric patients, both for travel and routine vaccines. Next, I'd like to navigate to our tables and tools menu. There is a lot of information available in this menu, so we'll spend some time walking through each of these sections. First, I would like to highlight our activity spectra. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. We have antibacterial activity spectra, we have antifungal and antiviral spectra of activity tables. For those of you familiar with our print products, this corresponds to table four in our books. And what you see here is a list of organisms across the left-hand side of my screen and medications across the top of my screen. And you see recommendations for empiric therapy based on those organism medication interactions. I do encourage everyone to click see legend so you can explore the different recommendations from the Sanford Guide editorial board about what it means to be a preferred agent versus an alternative agent, an agent of limited utility and not recommended. I also wanna point out that within this screen, all of the organisms across the left and drugs across the top are fully hyperlinked. So clicking on any of these will take you to the relevant page for either that organism or medication. Lastly, any cell that has a flag or triangle in the upper right-hand corner means there's more information to be learned by clicking on that particular cell. We have all kinds of different calculators available for both drug dosing and the other clinical decision-making tools, such as the CURB-65 calculator and the pneumonia severity index. We also have the vancomycin AUC calculator based on a two-level model. I'll open our creatinine clearance calculator and add some information. You can see that I'm switching the units to centimeters and kilograms, as most of you will have those units in your electronic medical records. When I click calculate, you'll see the estimated creatinine clearance for my patient. I can further see the equation that was used to make that calculation, and I can print or save those results if I want. Returning to our tables and tools menus, we have drug usage and drug dosing information. Expanding upon this menu, you will find lots of information about drug dosing, particularly in states of organ dysfunction. So there's information about ECMO drug dosing, obesity adjustments, pediatric adjustments, renal impairment adjustments. Go ahead and open our renal impairment dosing table here to show you how this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and search for a particular agent to narrow my results. I'm gonna go ahead and click for cefepime for the renal dosing recommendations. And you will see here on the screen, a table with those dosing recommendations based on creatinine clearance, including hemodialysis recommendations, as well as peritoneal dialysis recommendations and continuous renal replacement therapy recommendations. Navigating back to tables and tools, here you can also see information about adverse effects, drug interactions, and pregnancy risk and lactation. Many of these are in tabular format, such as the renal dosing table that I just showed you, and you can navigate through those pages by narrowing your search using the search bar. These quick links offer you access to our most popular content and pages we think you'll be looking for frequently. So we have quick links to our antibacterial spectra. Opening this link will take you right back to that spectra of activity table. We have our drug usage and dosage information. So clicking on this link is going to open all of those great drug use and dosage recommendations, including the renal impairment dosing table that I was just showing. We also have information about our regional guidelines. So that's going to be state health department recommendations. We have pharmacology information. This is going to open the pharmacologic features of antimicrobial agents table. I'll show you how to narrow your search here using the search bar. Looking for daptomycin, when I open this, it's going to give me all those PK, PD parameters for my agent, information about half-life, CSF penetration, therapeutic levels, etc. Our duration of therapy table. This is a popular reference that people like to use in order to determine appropriate duration of therapy. This table is organized by site of infection then subcategories into the diagnosis with a recommendation for duration of therapy. You will see a lot of ranges in this table. And as you can see here in the comments section, we have links to those resources when available to support these recommendations. We have our COVID-19 information also available as a quick link. And then that USA vaccines content information is also available here as one of our quick links. Last but not least, our CDC resources, which includes information available for healthcare professionals and patient education resources. Should you need help, there is an option up here to contact us. This will get you in touch with either our technical team or our customer support team. We do offer technical support via email 365 days a year, or you can go to the contact us page and ask any questions you might have.